The whole dwelling place was full of the snake. His coils were protruding through the windows. <laughs> Podcast, episode 218, Tipitaka, part 141, in which we will continue reading Mahavaga 1. This is the 12th part of Mahavaga 1. All right, uh, so for those who are just joining us, feel free to click here to start at Tipitaka part one. And uh, for those who are interested in Mahavaga one, but maybe want to start at the beginning of Mahavaga one, you can click here. I usually explain more, but uh, there's a lot of people I think that have seen this before. And so for their sake, I'm being brief. To anyone who's coming back, welcome back. To anyone who's new, welcome. Here we read Buddhist books. By we, I mean me. Picking up right where we left off last time. <clears throat> You're the bird. Then the Lord, having stayed in Rajagaha for as long as he found suiting, set out on tour for Kav Kapilavatu. Walking on tour in due course, he arrived at Kapilavatu. The Lord stayed there among the Sakyans in Kapilavatu, in the Banyan Monastery. Then the Lord, having dressed in the morning, taking his bowl and robe, approached the dwelling of Sudor, Sudhodara, I'll work on that, Sudhodana, there we go, the Sakyan relative of his. Gender as yet unknown, we'll find out, perhaps. Having approached, he sat down on the appointed seat. Then the lady, Rahula's mother, spoke thus to the boy Rahula, quote, this Rahula is your father. Go and ask him for your inheritance, end quote. Is Lord Buddha going to meet his former wife and son? This episode might be more interesting than I thought it would be. Let's keep reading. Then the boy Rahula approached the Lord. Having approached, he stood in front of the Lord and said, quote, Pleasant is your shadow, recluse. End quote. Then the Lord rising up from his seat, departed. Then the boy Rahula, following close behind the Lord, said, quote, Give me my inheritance, recluse. Give me my inheritance, recluse. End quote. Then the Lord addressed the venerable Shariputra, saying, quote, Well then, do you, Shariputra, let the boy Rahula go forth, end quote. So is this Shariputra's son? Wow. It's a little unclear, but I'm going to keep reading. I don't recall the name of Lord Buddha's son. Quote, how do I, Lord, let the boy Rahula go forth, end quote. Then the Lord, on this occasion, in this connection, Having given reason to talk, addressed the monks, saying, quote, I allow, monks, the going forth for novices by the three goings for refuge. And thus, monks, should you let one go forth. First, 
having made him have his hair and beard cut off, having got parentheses someone and parentheses to present him with yellow robes, having made him arrange his upper robe over one shoulder, having made him honor the monk's feet, having made him sit down on his haunches, having made him salute with joined palms. He should be told, quote within quotes, speak thus, quotes within quotes within quotes. I go to the awakened one for refuge. I go to Dhamma for refuge. I go to the order for refuge or as is commonly known in English, the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. Anyway. And a second time I go, three dots, and a third time I go, three dots, to the order for refuge, and quotes within quotes within quotes, and quotes within quotes, I allow monks, still continuing within the quotes of Lord Buddha talk, I allow monks the going forth for novices by these three goings for refuge. End quotes. Then the venerable Shariputra let the boy Rahula go forth. Then Sudodana, the Sakyan, approached the Lord. Having approached, having greeted the Lord, he sat down at a respectful distance. Okay, so Sud. Dodana is male. All right. Not that it matters, but never mind. As he was sitting down at a respectful distance, Sudodana, the Sakyan, spoke thus to the Lord. Quote, I, Lord, ask the Lord for one boon. End quote. Quote, but Gotama, truth finders are beyond parentheses, granting, and parentheses, boons, end quote. Quote, Lord, is, it is what is allowable. It is what is blameless, end quote. Quote, speak on, Gotama, end quote. Quote, Lord, when the Lord went forth, there came to be not a little sorrow. Likewise, when Nanda did, it was extreme when Rahula did. Affection for a son, Lord, cuts into the skin. Having cut into the skin, it cuts into the hide. Having cut into the hide, it cuts into the flesh, three dots, the ligaments, three dots, the bones. Having cut into the bones and reaching the marrow, it abides. It were well, Lord, if the masters did not let a child to go forth without the parent's consent, end quote. Okay, I'm a little confused. So Rahula is somebody's son. I thought it was Lord Buddha's son. Then I thought it was Shariputra's son. Then it seems to be this guy's son. The lady, when the monks came in, said, this is your father. I mean, Lord Buddha came in. She said, this is your father. He said, father, give me my allowance to Lord Buddha. So Buddha said, what do you say, Shariputra? Are you going to give him his allowance? Let him be a monk. And he said, yes will let him be a monk. And then some rando, who's apparently a cousin of Lord Buddha, comes in and says, the bond a father has with a son. You see why I'm confused? Uh, let's keep reading and uh, hopefully things will become a little more clear. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okie dokie. Then the Lord gladdened, rejoiced, Roused, delighted, Sudodana, the Sakyan, with talk on Dhamma. Then Sudodana, the Sakyan, gladdened three dots, delighted by the Lord with talk on Dhamma, rising from his seat, having greeted the Lord, departed, keeping his right side towards him. Then the Lord, 
on this occasion, in this connection, having given reason to talk, addressed the monks, saying, quote, monks, a child who has not the parent's consent should not be let go forth. Whoever should let, parentheses, one such, end parentheses, go forth, there is an offensive wrongdoing, end quote. Then the Lord, having stayed in Kapilavatu for as long as he found suiting, set out on tour for Savati. Walking on tour in due course, he arrived at Savati. Then the Lord stayed there in Savati, in the Jetta Grove, in Anatta Pindika's monastery. Now at that time, the family who supported the Venerable Shariputra sent a youth to the Venerable Shariputra, saying, quote, May the elder let this youth go forth. End quote. Then it occurred to the Venerable Shariputra, quote, A rule of training laid down by the Lord says that two novices should not attend one, parentheses, monk, end parentheses, and this Rahula is my novice. Now, what line of conduct should be followed by me? End quote. He told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, I allow, monks, two novices to attend one experienced, competent monk, or else as many to attend, parentheses, him, end parentheses, as he is able to exhort, to instruct, end quote. Well, sometimes when I'm reading, I get confused. And then later, when I listen to it, I go, oh, uh, yeah, no, it, it makes sense. So here's hoping that this is going to be one of those situations, because that whole thing with this is your father, father, give me my inheritance. What do you say, Shari Pucha? Are you going to give him his inheritance and let him become a monk? And then the father comes in. That was weird. That was weird. Okie dokie, I'll keep reading. Then it occurred to the novices, quote, Now how many rules for training are there for us, and in which we are to train? End quote. They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, Monks, I allow ten rules for training for novices, and novices to train in these. Restraint from onslaught on creatures, Restraint from taking what is not given. Restraint from unchastity. Restraint from lying. Restraint from the occasion of sloth, parentheses, in, induced by, end parentheses, fermented liquor, spirits, and strong drink. Notice he didn't say cannabis. Sorry. Uh, restraint from eating at the wrong time. Restraint from seeing shows of dancing, singing, and music. Restraint from the occasion of using garlands, scents, ungo, unguents, unguents, and wearing finery. Restraint from using high beds, large beds. Restraint from accepting gold and silver. I allow monks these ten rules for training for novices, and novices to train in these. End quote. Now at that time, novices were not respectful, not deferential, not courteous towards the monks. Monks three dots spread it about, saying, quote, how can these novices not be respectful, three dots, toward the monks? End quote. They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, quote, Monks, I allow you to impose a punishment on a novice who is possessed of five qualities. If he tries for non-receiving parentheses of gains and parentheses by monks, if he tries for non-profiting by monks, if he tries for non-residence for monks, if he reviles and abuses monks, 
If he causes monk to break with monk, I allow you monks to impose a punishment on a novice who is possessed of these five qualities, end quote. Well, what's the punishment? No TV. Then it occurred to these monks, quote, now how should the punishment be imposed? Same page, end quote. They told this matter to the Lord. He said, I allow, quote, I allow you monks to make a prohibition, end quote. Now at that time, monks made a prohibition for novices in respect of an order's entire monastery. The novices, on being unable to enter the monastery, went away and left the order and went over to parentheses other and parentheses sects, S-E-C-T-S. They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, monks, an order's entire monastery should not be made, parentheses, the subject of, and parentheses, a prohibition. Whoever should make, parentheses, it's such, and parentheses, there is an offense of wrongdoing. I allow you monks to make a prohibition in respect of wherever he is staying or wherever he is entering, end quote. Now at that time, monks made a prohibition for novices in respect of nutriment taken by the mouth. People making a drink of kanji and also rice for an order spoke thus to the novices, quote, Come, honored sirs, drink the kanji. Come, honored sirs, partake of the rice. End quote. The novices spoke thus, quote, It is not possible, sirs. The monks have made, parentheses, this the subject of, end parentheses, a prohibition. End quote. The people, three dots, spread it about, saying, quote, How can these reverend sirs make a prohibition for novices in respect of nutriment taken by the mouth? End quote. They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, Monks, nutriment taken by the mouth is not to be made, parentheses, the subject of, and parentheses, a prohibition. Whoever should make, parentheses, it's such, end parentheses, there is an offense of wrongdoing. And quote, told is the item on punishment. <clears throat> now at that time, the group of six monks, oh, glad to have them back. Are they here? Yeah. Without having asked preceptors, parentheses, for permission, and parentheses, made a prohibition for novices. Preceptors hunted about, saying, quote, Now where are our novices? They are not to be seen. End quote. Monks spoke thus, quote, A prohibition was made, your reverences, by the group of six monks. End parentheses. I mean, quote, the preceptors, three dots, spread it about, saying, quote, How can this group of six monks, without asking us, parentheses, for permission, and parentheses, make a prohibition for our novices, end quote. They told this matter the Lord. He said, quote, Monks, a prohibition is not to be made without asking preceptors, parentheses, for permission, end parentheses. Whoever should make one, there is an offense of wrongdoing, end quote. Thank you, the group of six monks. All right. <clears throat> now at that time, the group of six monks, back, lured away the novices of monks who were elders. The elders, getting their own tooth wood and water for rinsing the mouth, were incommoded, incommoded, must be an old bird, Okie dokie. They told this matter to the Lord. Inconvenience, maybe. All right. They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, Monks, another's assembly should not be lured away. Whoever should lure it away, there is an offense of wrongdoing. End quote. Thank you, the group of six monks. Now at that time, Kandaka, the novice of the venerable 
Upananda, the son of the Sakyans, seduced the nun Kandaka. What? A monk named Kandaka, a novice monk named Kandaka, seduced a nun named Kandaka. Okay, all right. I've noticed that sometimes boy and girl names are... Okay. Monks, three dots, spread it about, saying, quote, How can this novice indulge in a bad habit like this? They told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, I allow you monks to expel a novice who is possessed of ten qualities. If he is one who makes onslaught on creatures, if he is one who takes what is not given, if he is one who is unchaste, if he is a liar, if he is a drinker of strong drinks, if he speaks dispraise of the awakened one, if he speaks dispraise of Dhamma, if he speaks dispraise of the order, if he is a holder of, false, of a false view, if he is a seducer of nuns. Doesn't that fall under unchaste? You mean he can seduce regular women? I, uh, no, that would mean he's unchaste. All right. I allow you monks to expel a novice who is possessed of these ten qualities. End quote. Now at that time, a certain eunuch came to have gone forth among the monks. Having approached a number of young monks, he spoke thus, quote, Come, venerable ones, commit an offense with me. That's always a good pickup line. End quote. The monks refused, saying, quote, be off, eunuch, depart, eunuch, what need have you, end quote. Refused by the monks, having approached a number of large, fat novices, he spoke thus, quote, come, your reverences, commit an offense with me, end quote. The novices refused, saying, quote, be off, eunuch, depart, eunuch, what need have you, end quote. Refused by the novices, having approached mahouts and grooms, Okey-doke. he spoke thus, quote, Come, sirs, commit an offense with me, end quote. The mahouts, that's M-A-H-O-U-T-S, and grooms committed an offense with him. What was it? Inquiring minds want to know. These three dots spread it about, saying, quote, These recluses, sons of the Sakyans, are eunuchs, and those of them who are not eunuchs, they too commit offenses with eunuchs. Thus they are one and all unchaste. End quote. Monks heard these mahouts and grooms who three dots spread it about. Then these monks told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, monks, if a eunuch is not ordained, he should not be ordained. If he is ordained, he should be expelled, end quote. Okay, okay. It was a different time. Doesn't really pass today's uh, PC standards, does it? Hmm. <sighs> All right, Lord Buddha. Okay, Boomer. Sorry, I don't mean to be disrespectful. Now, at that time, a certain descendant of an ancient family, which had come down in the world, was delicately nurtured. Then it occurred to this descendant of the ancient family which had come down in the world, quote, Now I am delicately nurtured. I am not able to acquire wealth. What? I am not able to acquire wealth, not, parentheses already, and parentheses acquired, nor to increase the wealth, parentheses already, and parentheses acquired. Now by what means could I live at ease and not be in want? End quote. Then it occurred to this descendant three dots in the world, quote, Now these recluses, sons of the Sakyans, are of pleasant conduct, of pleasant character, 
Having eaten good meals, they lie down to sleep on beds, sheltered from the wind. Suppose that I, having prepared a bowl and robe for myself, having cut off my hair and beard, having clothed myself in yellow robes, having gone to a monastery, should be in communion together with monks." End quote. Then that descendant, three dots, in the world, having prepared a bowl and robe for himself, having cut off his hair and beard, having clothed himself in yellow robes, having gone to a monastery, greeted the monks. The monks spoke thus, quote, Of how many years standing are you, your reverence? Quote, What does this mean, your reverences? Quote within quotes, how many years standing, end quote within quotes, end quotes. Quote, but who, your reverence, is your preceptor? End quote. Quote, what does this mean, your reverences? Quote within quotes, preceptor, end quote within quotes, end quotes. The monks spoke thus to the venerable Upali. Quote, please, reverend Upali, examine this one who has gone forth. End quote. Then that descendant, three dots in the world, was being examined by the Venerable Upali. He told him this matter. The Venerable Upali told this matter to the monks. The monks told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, monks, if one who is in communion by theft is not ordained, he should not be ordained. If he is ordained, he should be expelled. Monks, if one who has gone over to parentheses another end parentheses sect is not ordained, he should not be ordained. If he is ordained, he should be expelled. End quote. Here's another example of a rule that contradicts a rule that uh, was from a couple of episodes ago of uh, Buddhist books. I don't remember exactly where it was, but he had said if a monk is coming from another sect and leaves that sect and wants to join our sect, then he has to be on probation for four months unless he's a cousin of mine or a matted-haired worshiper of fire. Now he's saying uh, that they shouldn't be ordained at all. So. Thank you. Uh, a few moments later. M.I.A. Okay, what's up with that? It's different when I say it, I know. Okay, anyway, now at that time, a certain, uh, a certain serpent was troubled about his birth as a serpent. He was ashamed of it, loathed it. Then it occurred to that serpent, Quote, now by what means could I be freed quickly from birth as a serpent and get back human status? End quote. Then it occurred to that serpent, quote, these recluses, sons of the Sakyans, are Dhamma farers, even farers, Brahma farers. They are truth speakers. They are of moral habit, of good conduct. Now, if I were to go forth among the recluses, sons of the Sakyans, so would I be freed quickly from birth as a serpent and could get back human status. End quote. Then that serpent, in the form of a Brahmin youth, having approached the monks, asked for the going forth. The monks let him go forth. They ordained him. Now at that time, that serpent, together with a certain monk, was living in a dwelling place on the boundary. Then that monk, getting up in the night towards dawn, paced up and down in the open air. Then that serpent, confident that the monk had gone out, fell asleep. The whole dwelling place was full of the snake. His coils were protruding through the windows. Then that monk, thinking, quote, I will enter the dwelling place, end quote, 
opening the door, saw the whole dwelling place full of the snake, his coils protruding through the windows. Terrified at seeing this, he uttered a cry of distress. Monks, having run up, spoke thus to that monk, quote, Why did you, your reverence, utter a cry of distress? End quote. Quote, your reverences, this whole dwelling place is full of a snake. His coils are protruding through the windows. End quote. Then that serpent, having awakened because of this noise, sat down on his own seat. Monks spoke thus, quote, Who are you, friend? End quote, quote, I am a serpent, honored sirs. End quote, quote, but why did you, friend, act this way? End quote. Then that serpent told this matter to the monks. The monks told this matter to the Lord. Then the Lord, on this occasion, in this connection, having had the order of monks convened, spoke thus to this serpent, quote, Indeed, you serpents are not liable to growth in this Dhamma and discipline. You serpent, go away. Observe the observance day precisely on the 14th, 15th, and 18th day of the half month. Thus will you be freed quickly from birth as a serpent and get back human status. End quote. Then that serpent, thinking, quote, it is said that I am not liable to growth in this dharma and discipline, end quote, pained, afflicted, shedding tears, departed, having uttered a cry of distress. Then the Lord addressed the monks, saying, quote, monks, there are these two cases of manifestation of a serpent's true nature. When he indulges in sexual intercourse with a female of his own species, and when he falls asleep in confidence. Monks, these are two cases of manifestation of a serpent's true nature. Monks, if an animal is not ordained, it should not be ordained. If it is ordained, it should be expelled. End quote. Now at that time, a certain Brahmin youth deprived his mother of life. He was troubled about his evil deed. He was ashamed of it, loathed it. Then it occurred to that Brahmin youth, quote, now by what means could I get rid of this evil deed? End quote. Then it occurred to this Brahmin youth, quote, These recluses, sons of the Sakyans, are dhamma farers, even farers, brahma farers. They are truth speakers of moral habit, of good conduct. Now, if I were to go forth among these recluses, sons of the Sakyans, so would I get rid of this evil deed, end quote. Then that Brahmin youth, having approached parentheses some and parentheses monks, asked for the going forth. The monks spoke thus to the venerable Upali. Quote, Formerly, indeed, Reverend Upali, a serpent in the form of a Brahmin youth went forth among the monks. Please, Reverend Upali, examine this Brahmin youth. End quote. Then, as that Brahmin youth was being examined by the Venerable Upali, he told him this matter. The Venerable Upali told this matter to the monks. The monks told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, Monks, if a matricide is not ordained, he should not be ordained. If he is ordained, he should be expelled. End quote. At that time, a certain Brahmin youth deprived his father of life. He was troubled about his evil deed. Three dots. Parentheses, the Polytext Society has uh, decided that rather than write out all that stuff that, that they just wrote out, I mean, Miss Horner specifically at the, the PTS, 
you know, just like, just it's all the same stuff. All the, everything, all, that whole thing, even Upali. It's just copy paste. End parentheses, three dots. The monks told this matter to the Lord. He said, quote, monks, if a patricide, parricide? If a parricide is not ordained, he should not be ordained. If he is ordained, he should be expelled, end quote. And I've just learned a new word. Okay. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Should I? Yeah, it, it's going to go on with other similar, I mean, other situations where Lord Buddha is going to say, hey, don't let him in. And if they're in, kick him out. In, you know, not in that voice, obviously, but not in those words specifically. Not even in these words, because he wasn't speaking English, obviously. He was presumably speaking the language we've come to know as Pali. Thank you all for joining me for this episode, for this recital, and uh, I hope you had fun. And um, I'll go ahead and get to the closing. Next time we'll pick up right where we left off. <clears throat> to the north and to the south, to the east and to the west, to the spirits of light among us and to the spirits below, we send out our reverent love and compassion. May all beings be happy. May all beings be serene. May all beings be in peace. Oh.